I haven't gotten a lot of sleep uh, the last few nights because I, I've been up and I've just been so excited. Uh, I felt, uh, well, I shouldn't say this, but uh, it seems to me like a, a, a woman uh, getting ready to give birth to a child, and I know I don't know what that feels like, so I, I'm not saying that I do, but this movie, this documentary that has been two and a half years in the making called Monumental, In Search of America's National Treasure, was finally released on Tuesday evening, and it's being played again this weekend in theaters around the country. <clears throat> and this was all coming out of my concern, not so much as an actor or a politician, but as a father of six kids who's concerned about the direction that our world is headed, because I have six kids in this world, and I want a great future for them. Morally, spiritually, economically, we're, we're, we're in trouble. <clears throat> and I'm wondering, what can we do about it? And with most people playing the blame game, I thought maybe we've just forgotten what made this country such a great place in the first place. If only I could talk to the men and women who built our nation, maybe they could tell us what we're doing wrong and what we need to do to fix it. So I bought a ticket and went to England to retrace the escape route of the pilgrims and followed them into their secret underground meeting places, the dungeons that they were thrown into, uh, in order to discover the secret, the secret recipe, the, the thoughts and the principles that they carried with them to Holland uh, and developed under the leadership of their pastor and brought on the Mayflower to America and planted in this, this virgin soil to give birth to a nation that would later experience more blessing and prosperity and security than any other in the history of, of humanity so that we could take that and use it to build and secure our future for future generations. And one of the historians that took me on this journey is Dr. Marshall Foster. Marshall, uh, we've, we've talked before uh, here on the, the Praise program, but it's, it's an honor and a privilege to have you back because uh, you keep just giving me more and more stories of, of the, the fact that the gospel has victory written all over it. And when it gets into the heart of a man or a woman, there's just no stopping them. Can, can you give our, our viewing audience tonight an overview of what's been going on since the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve up until today? I know that's that's in a, tall a minute, order, maybe two. Huh? But yeah, I'll yeah, give you sure, three minutes. Sure. And tell us what's been going on in the world. Yeah, it's so exciting because most people today, if you were to ask them, that we we see in myopic. It's almost like we're we're seeing with blinders on, like a horse running in a race. We fail to look back and see the cosmic perspective. The cosmic perspective is that God, from the beginning of time, in Revelation 13, 8, it says, the Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world. God the Father and God the Son made a plan before the foundation of the world to redeem his world by redeeming man who would fall because of our sin. And he came in the flesh through Jesus Christ and accomplished that redemption. But that story is the, is the story of the gospel. We know that story in its myopic nature, but do we apply it now to the story of liberty? Do we apply it to the transformation of society? Oftentimes, we don't bring it that far. We think, well, things are bad. It can't get any, you know, what are we going to do? And we get kind of caught up in our everyday world. Right. But if we go back to Genesis, we see that God had a plan. He had a plan of redemption and love, and that plan was seen through Abraham. And he said that the whole world would be blessed through you. That's right. And then he did bless through him. And then he came to Moses, and he told Moses the same, the same thing. He gives a covenant, and, he, and Moses goes to the people and says, says in the Shema that they should know God and love God and, and train their children up in the morning and, and, and in the evening and when they, when they rise up and when, they, and when they go to sleep. And then he goes on to say that he will bless them if they will obey him. And then they go into the promised land and they set up a, a republic that's similar to the one that 3,000 years later was going to be set up in the United States of America and they have liberty and they have freedom, they have justice like no other nation around them. They're all killing their children and, and human sacrifice and and slavery is, is everywhere except in this one little republic. And then they fall apart because they turn their back on God. And we see that looks like it's going down again. There's no hope. But what happens? Christ comes. Right. And he preaches the first sermon there in Capernaum. He actually stands up, well, actually in his own hometown, and he says, Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 8. He quotes from Isaiah chapter 61. He gives five reasons why he has come. He says, 
I have come to set the captives free. I have come to set those who were in bondage and in prison free. Twice he states it. And then after giving other things, like I've come to give sight to the blind, and I've come to preach the gospel of the poor, he then sits down, rolls up the scroll, and says, Today, this prophecy has been fulfilled in your midst. At that moment, the story of liberty was completed. I've done it. I have set the captives free. It's a fait accompli. And from that moment, his army that he sent out into the Roman Empire, which overwhelmed the empire in, in three centuries, did so without, without having any swords or shields in the traditional sense, but they went out with bruises on their faces and martyrdoms and, and love for children and reaching out in love to their neighbor and sharing the gospel. And what happens? The Roman Empire is transformed and Constantine is converted to Christ in the, in the fourth century. And, and the Roman Empire then becomes a foundation in its collapse for the transformation of the world. And the gospel then spreads to Europe and on to America and now to Asia and now to Africa. So what are we all sad about? Why are we sitting around with our root beer going, well, there's only a few of us that believe when the gospel is going out to the whole world. The story of victory is everywhere in the air. It's just, whoo. Absolutely. And so, and so, I mean, why are we sitting around with our root beers thinking, oh no, it's just a few of us. Why do we do that? There's not a few of us. There's actually almost two and a half billion. Two and a half billion. The largest religion in the world and the fastest growing religion in the world is Christianity. And where is it Most growing? Most people don't think that. No, they don't understand what's going on in Africa. There were 10 million Christians in Africa in 1900. There are now 365 million Christians, about half of Africa. There were between 10 and 15 million in China in 1945. Very few. I mean, you've got billions of people, a billion and a quarter, billion and a half people in China. But what has happened? Now, that's gone up 10, 12 fold to 125 to 150 million about 20% of China has now become Christian, and most people believe that, that China will become the next great Christian nation in the world in the next 20 to 30 years. That's how fast Christianity is growing, because of the liberating power of God, not because of the power of swords that have dominated the transformation of other nations, that have brought tyranny instead of liberty. What the gospel brings is political liberty, economic liberty, educational liberty, moral liberty, liberty in every Personal, way. Personal, spiritual liberty from sin. And mm. joy. The best part of it is joy. That, that the victory has been won for us because every one of us knows that we've got problems that we can't do it in ourselves. We feel insufficient and we feel sinners. Oh, what, how can I do this, Lord? And God says, trust me. Look at my history. Look at my track record. What have I done? That's why God says, That's right. remember the mighty deeds of God. It's what God has done, Kirk. And that's what we trace in Monumental, is that story of liberty, which was the heart that made America great. Marshall and I have uh, spent the last couple of years uh, on this journey, and uh, he's taken me to places in England, taken me to places in Holland, places in Plymouth, Massachusetts. We've gone to Boston, Harvard University. We've gone to Washington, D.C., uh, visited uh, museums in Texas, and learning about the rich faith of our forefathers. And we've heard so many different stories about, about those who went before us that framed this nation were, were atheists, agnostics, and deists. And our history has been rewritten. And when I went and I began holding those original source documents and I could read uh, Governor William Bradford's journal, and when you took me to the monument in Plymouth, Massachusetts, the largest granite monument in America, 180 tons of granite laying out a distinctly biblical worldview and the strategy on how to build and sustain a free and just society. I was blown away. I thought, what country are we talking about? What forefathers are you, are you referring to? And it's our own. And yet no one ever told me that in school. There is a message in this movie, Monumental, that just thrilled my heart, it opened my eyes, and we have taken people on this journey, and we will take you on this journey through England and Holland, over the Atlantic in the, Mer in the, uh, the, the Mayflower, to the East Coast, and show you the journey of the men and women who founded and uh, framed this nation. 
It's called Monumental, and we actually have a trailer that you can see right now to get you excited and fired up to see this movie this weekend. Here it is. There's nothing like bones to remind you of your heritage. <laughs> The set of ideas that is being implemented and advanced in this capital at this time is terribly frightening to people who are students of history. And when you look at the Roman Empire, parallels to what is going on in America are absolutely frightening. And the question is, are we going to go the right path ourselves, or are we going to continue down the wrong path that so many nations have fallen into? I can't save your soul. Well, Marshall, uh, people ask me this question. They say, you know, I have all kinds of critical issues that are facing me and my family, finances, uh, gas prices, food prices, educating my children in a, in a culture that is hostile to my values and unraveling everything I'm teaching my kids. How is this film, Monumental, that you were such a huge part of, going to give uh, hopeful answers to families who are saying these things? It does look dark sometimes, doesn't it? Especially if you watch enough news. Sit around and watch an hour of news and you're depressed for a week. Uh, and so no wonder people are depressed. But, but the good news is, is to look back and to realize that all that we need, the national treasure of America, is not found in chests of gold in Fort Knox, because there is no gold in Fort Knox anymore to speak of. Uh, and, it, and that isn't our treasure anyway. The treasure is in our hearts. The treasure is in our minds. If we have the word of God, and we're allowing God to teach us, then we have all that is necessary to recreate not only American liberty, but American prosperity and family happiness. And all the things that we desire in our hearts that we're crying for are there and available to us. And that's what our film shows, is that the Pilgrim Fathers and mothers, when they came over on the Mayflower, they have 102 of them. They land here in late November. It snows, probably three feet of snow on the ground that winter. They land and start building a little shack on, on Christmas Day of 1620. Their wives and their, and their children are sleeping out on the Mayflower. It's freezing cold. They're all dying of the scurvy, and, 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 and half of them are dying. In fact, they're laying around. Only six could walk out of these 102, and then they would die, one or two per day, and they would go bury them in a common grave and because they were afraid the Native Americans would kill them. And so they get all the way through the winter, and they just get to the end of the winter, and the captain says, I stayed because I knew you'd all die, and, and I would be here to pick you up and take you back to England. Here, this is your last chance, and here they're given that opportunity. You can imagine laying around six. Six people are, are taking care of everybody else, and the rest of them are sitting in a common grave. Well, get on the boat. You're three weeks away from England. Not one of them went back. Everyone stayed, and they stayed and built the freest, richest nation the world has ever known upon a biblical foundation. All they needed was the word of God and their faith, and that's what they had. You see, the root determines the fruit. Ideas have consequences. If you do the right thing over the long haul, God will bless it. That's the proof of history. History proves it. The Bible teaches us that and all we need to do is to believe it again like they did and it shows that against all odds it can happen if it can happen for them if it can happen for George Washington outnumbered and outgunned by the British on every hand losing seven battles in a row and then comes up miraculously and wins the American Revolution says it was only by divine providence it, again and again in American history we've been in these impossible situations we were in a great depression in 1857 before the the Civil War in the stock market it crashed in 18 does it sound familiar stock market crashed in 1857 and people were jumping out in Wall Street out of the top floors which were only six or seven stories in those days but you were still dead 
And you get to the end, and these guys are all jumping. There's no hope. One little guy from a Reformed church starts a Bible study and a prayer group that met in one of the burlesque theaters. They began to pray. It started with five. It went to 20. Then it went to 100. It went to 10,000 business leaders from New York City every day at lunch from 12 to 2 were having prayer meetings. A revival swept through the north, swept through the south. The Civil War started three years later, and many of those 600,000 men that died on both sides of the Civil War were saved in the Great Awakening of, of the Civil War that began out of a stock market crash in 1857. You see, when things look deep and dark and there's no hope, it is that minute that God's getting a hold of his people and he, he's beginning a revival and awakening that will change the course of history three or four years in the front of us, but we just sometimes don't see it. So to have faith is to believe in the things that you do not see. That's what the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 11, isn't it? That's right. And that's what we need to have is that kind of faith. And God will give it to us. We ask him and we can see our children saved. As you said in the film, we can have a monumental future for our children if we'll simply have faith in him, trust his word, and he'll get us ways out of this mess we're in. Well, you know, I listen to these stories, and they sound, I mean, they're, 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 they're fantastic. But we, we also know that America has, has had its problems. It's had its deep problems. Uh, we, we, we're not looking back and saying uh, that we're polishing the past and saying that it was all perfect or that, uh, that all of these founding fathers were all Christians, right? Um, why have we had problems if God's been working in the past? What, why do things go bad? Well, that's the beauty of it. If there were no problems and, and uh, then we would have no sin in the world, then I would be dead. I would, uh, uh, God would have judged me long ago. I mean, there's all of us, nobody qualifies because nobody's perfect. It never has been a perfect age, and there won't be until Jesus comes when sin is completely done away with. So there are always problems. There are always people that won't believe. There's always deal, things that we have to deal with, like we had to deal with slavery. We had to deal with prejudice. We've had to deal with uh, economic inequalities. We've had to deal with class structures that are, are even now clashing at one another, the rich and the poor, and different ethnic backgrounds. That has always been a problem for the world. What is the solution, though? The solution is found in Christ, for we, we are neither Jew nor Greek or slave nor free. We're all one in Christ. And the more Christianity and true faith and the knowledge of the scriptures permeates the heart of the church, which in America, and we're the largest Christian nation in the world with more Christians and more Bibles than anywhere else in the world. Once we get our hearts right with God, all of America can be transformed from the heart of the church right out to the nation. No doubt in my mind. Do you believe that? I, I believe that, and you know, I didn't always think that way, but, uh, but I do now because when I went back, I can see how God's worked in the past, and that's given me great hope and optimism for the future because of his character and because of his promises, and it feels so good to stand on the promises of God. That's right. That's right. And, you know, in the Great Awakening in, in the 1730s when George Whitfield and Jonathan Edwards would go out, a couple of preachers against all odds, everybody was going out to get a, you know, a granite countertop and a good time and get some more land. Uh, there was a great land depression and all the, all the property values, I, we don't know that in Southern California, but all the property values died, died in the 1830s in Amer or 1730s in America. And so everybody was depressed, it was discouraged. These guys come along and began to preach the gospel. Who are these guys? Jonathan, Jonathan Edwards, Edwards, a preacher and George Whitfield, a preacher from England, he came along and began to preach to crowds of 20,000 people in the open air. And crowds would gather to hear him simply preach the simple gospel. And now you've got people that are in these, these factories that are working, and George Whitfield would walk in, and he wouldn't be able to preach to them because as he walked in, they would drop to their knees on their machines and cry out to God and say, have mercy on me, and they'd come to know Christ before he preached. This happened throughout the country that people began to turn, their, turn, to, turn to God, both in the working class as, as well as in the business class, as all different classes, and began to see revivals and awakenings and orphanages. And, and then America was united before the American Revolution, where all these colonies came together and united under, under the banner of Christ rather than on the banner of party. Our problem today, we've divided up into parties. So that it's not just political parties. We've divided up into, into races and unions and classes where we're all divided up. I'm this, I'm of that group, I'm of this group. And, and the scriptures warn us 
Don't say that you're of Paul or Apollos. We're all one in Christ. Why don't we stand for him and his truth, and then all of our little kingdoms will fall to the bottom, and his will rise up, and that's true liberty. That's where liberty will be for all of us. Well, if, 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 if you like what you're hearing, if this is just uh, capturing your, your mind and uh, you want to know more, I, I want to encourage you, uh, find a way to see this documentary film. And Marshall actually takes you to the places in Holland and in Plymouth and in Boston. And uh, I will help you to discover the national treasure of America. And like you said, it's, it's not a treasure of gold or silver in chests of wood. It ultimately was in the chests of men and women, in their hearts. It was the principles and the truths that was planted in them by their pastor, John Robinson. And uh, this documentary film will be in six cities this weekend. Uh, if it's not in your city this weekend, go to monumentalmovie.com or you can go to demandthemovie.com and demand the movie come to your town. You simply type in your zip code and your email address and you can tell us where to send the monumental film that we're talking about. So demandthemovie.com and you can get it to come to you. Uh, Marshall, wh why, in some senses, you've said that, that this documentary has summed up much of your life's work in terms of the message that's behind it. Um, what is it that you're hoping people will walk away from when they see this film? I believe, and I, we've already seen it because we saw the grand opening two days ago. We had 560 theaters, and we had the privilege of actually being there with some of our friends. And, and the thing we saw as they left the theater, people came out with hope. Not just hope in their hearts like, oh, it was nice to hear a fairy tale about how America might get better, but more of a specific, I see now a strategy, a matrix of freedom and liberty, that if I follow that strategy, we really can bring liberty to our children. And, and that is what I pray this film will do, because it's simply going back and remembering the strategy of Moses and the strategy of Jesus. You don't lord it over people, you serve people. You, right. don't, you don't go top, you go bottom. You go from the bottom up and you love your family, then you love your church, and then you love your community, and then you love That's the right. orphan, and then you love all around you. And the result is that the community is transformed from the heart up. That strategy is the strategy that is the only strategy in the history of mankind, Kirk, that has ever worked. So why would we go anywhere else? Why Marxism, communism, socialism, they all fail. Why tyranny? Why do we want to always go to some big leader at the top that's going to tell us what to do. That always brings death and destruction. Why not go to God and that's be right. free? Amen. I don't know where you are in your relationship with the Lord this evening, but you may be far, far away from God. You may have uh, been like I was for half of my life, uh, denying the existence of God and running away from any kind of authority that might uh, have something to say about how you live your life. But let me tell you this. Um, ultimately, there is only one great authority. Uh, it's not you. It's not me. It's not a political leader or a church leader. The great authority that you and I will stand before one day is the one who cared enough to give you life, keeps your heart beating at night, and fills your, air, your lungs with air every day and he has provided a way for you to be washed clean of your sin your guilt and your shame and your pain for that to be gone and reconciled to him and it's through his son Jesus Christ turn from your sin once and for all put your trust in him not in your own goodness but in the perfect righteousness of Christ and his blood shed for you on the cross he rose from the grave he defeated your greatest enemy and he rules and reigns as the Lord of the universe and the Lord of your life. Submit to him and be blessed. And your life will bring honor and glory and blessing to the one who gave it to you. God bless you.
We're so glad you've been with us for Praise the Lord. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today, Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, write, TBN, P.O. Box 768, Station B, Ottawa, Ontario, K1P 5P8. If you haven't asked Christ in your life, call a prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.